what's happening in my veggie garden? A lot. This is the second planting of broad beans that I did. And these pods are starting to fill. I planted these at the end of winter, I think. It even could have been early spring, so September, early September. The potatoes were already in the ground at the time. The potatoes are starting to flower now, so we'll be able to start bandicooting. For the non-Australians watching, bandicooting just means digging under the ground and extracting individual potatoes, just like a little bandicoot one of our marsupials would dig. This stand of broad beans I planted at the beginning of winter, late autumn. I planted them a bit thick so they are struggling a little bit. Having said that, they have been yielding very well. I'm starting to cut out the plants um, as I go to thin them out. The sweet corn is out of the ground. I have two different sizes because I did two plantings. Some of them were taking a long time to come up. So I planted more. We had a lot of dirt from an excavation for a shed and I have top dress with that. There are a lot of stones in it. As you can see here, as I find the stones, I just throw them over to the side. As you can see here, the nasturtium is uh, perennial. It didn't die down in this corner. That's because this corner of the garden is the most protected from frost and wind, also the driest, which means that the curry plant loves it here. I got this curry plant from the unhappy plants table I think the neighbours have just come home the dog's barking and in three years so it's coming into its third year it has really taken off this is tansy growing beside my orange tree I've had to cut this back twice now because it really does like to take over if you allow it to. This is my little naval Washington orange tree. It gave me my first crop last year. As you can see it's in full flower and it has some fruit set. And yes the blossom smell is divine. This is my imperial mandarin tree. I was absolutely delighted to discover yesterday it's first flowers, very first flowers. I have to cut back this pineapple sage. Every year I cut it back by half because it has been shading out the mandarin tree. Well it certainly does if I let it. By the end of summer it will be as tall as this tree. Um, it just loves it here. Again it's protected from the frost so it does very well. Oh, woohoo! I've just discovered two more flowers on the mandarin tree. How exciting! Also, by the end of summer, this not only will have grown, but it will be covered with these red flowers, which the eastern spinebills just adore. I have learnt the hard way not to throw down the cuttings from the pineapple sage and especially not to cover them with dirt afterwards because they will grow. They are excellent for layering if you want to propagate the plant and that's what these are and here too. So it propagates very easily. I've been pulling it out lots because it's in my way. This parsley is self-sown. I dug it out from where it actually self-sowed earlier and put it in here. And this here is taro. I still have three, four, four plants in pots. Last year, towards the end of summer, I planted 
several plants in the ground. These all came from one taro tuber, which I found at the fruit and veggie shop um, two or three years ago. Um, so they've propagated very well. So they've done well in pots, so now I'm trying them in the garden. So this year they will have the full cycle in the garden. So it remains to be seen as to how well they do as far as producing a tuber. When I lived in Cairns in far north Queensland, we had it planted underneath the rainwater tank and the overflow of water would drip onto the plants and they just adored it. So I do know they love water. This is silver beet or more correctly Swiss chard. It's now bolting and going to see. We we're eating from this over winter. This is self-sown in my garden. This would probably be second or third generation, third easily, perhaps even fourth. I pulled two silver beet plants out recently. Um, this one is a recent self-sow, but it's which is why it's not very big, but it's already starting to bolt now that summer is really thinking about being here. We are the 10th of December, so first month of summer. The flat leaf parsley, all going to seed now. It's been there all winter. We've done very well from it. Like the silver beet, it self sows around the garden and I just pull it up wherever it's getting in my road. This little patch of marjoram just sat for a couple of years and it's really only this year it's really taken off got itself established so it's looking very happy so this is uh, one of my garlic beds it won't be too long before they're ready to harvest I have been cutting the scapes off to aid bulb development here's a scape here that I've missed so I'll come out later and cut that there's another one down there. I have two varieties of garlic growing. I do have it written down inside uh, which variety is which so that when I come to harvest them I'll know. I popped some butter beans in here. They're not that happy. They're not great companion plants I realise later. There were two up the other end but or you can see one it's really struggling and the other one was doing even worse so I just pulled that one out. But the little radishes, they don't mind. I just pop them in wherever. The lemon balm just loves it here and will self so readily so I'm forever pulling up little seedlings. The essential oil from lemon balm flowers is called Melissa and it's very expensive. Cabbages aren't supposed to be good companion plants with garlic either, but there were three here that self-sowed. I cut one out, but these two are doing okay. At least I think they're cabbages, as opposed to cauliflowers, and they're starting to heart. I've grown cabbages in this bed before, so I would be surprised if they weren't cabbages. These are three brand new beds that I made this year. The carrots were a little bit patchy and coming up, but they're doing okay and in here are strawberries which had quite a bit of fruit there yesterday but I ate it all and it was very sweet very juicy very yum more potatoes I pulled some broad beans out yesterday and took all the beans off them then I just chopped and dropped the bean plant in here as mulch for the spuds. I'm only growing two varieties of potatoes this year, pink eye and Dutch creams. This little container of water is for my ducks. The ducks come in here every morning. In fact they will wait at the gate to be let in if I'm a bit slow. You can tell by the state of the water they've been in here today already. If I change that water every day you wouldn't know would you? And as you can see it's raining, so you can probably hear the rain on my umbrella. Oh, there's a strawberry that won't be long. 
one of my compost heaps you can see a big branch of silver beet which I actually knocked off accidentally yesterday whilst draining the hose around that's in there plus stable hay and lots and lots of weeds underneath because I've been on a big weeding um, frenzy for want of a better word because the garden had got out of control but I am happy to report that I've dropped back down to four days a week work instead of five so that will make a bit more time for me to try and keep up with everything this is chocolate mint underneath the persimmon tree um, with a burned potato that's growing there the chocolate mint does very well every year and then around the corner here is white borage I bought this at a market down in Hobart uh, several years ago it does not reliably produce white borage all the time I'd say three quarters of the time its offspring will be purple flowers still but when it puts out a white one I take out all the purple ones nearby and let the white one dominate um, they're no better than the purple ones I wouldn't think but I just love them for their novelty and like the purple ones the flowers are edible they're reminiscent of cucumber in taste the valerian's having a great time although this branch of it has a become a bit weighed down with its own flowers and fallen over a bit um, plus I get in there with the mower and I might have given it a bit of a hard time as well the um, this rhubarb got a little bit flattened because the, the pallet or this other compost heap fell on it and the rose but the rose is very resilient as roses are I recently put all the compost from the two bays around the potatoes so I'm just starting to make this one again this one's really just a lot of stable hay with a few random um, rhubarb leaves or whatever because I'm wanting to finish off the other one before I start building on the next one, the second one this is my persimmon tree I do know that it's planted on quite a lot of clay so it has had uh, difficulty accessing nitrogen the leaves are a bit yellow but they've really greened up uh, but it does okay last year it gave me its first flower that one flower did set fruit but it fell off when it was half sized so I inspect the tree regularly to see if there are any more flower buds in the centre there I'm hoping that's going to be a flower bud but it could just be wishful thinking it might be just more leaves emerging in its earliest years the leaves weren't greening up at all so I put a whole bag like chaff bag of aged chicken manure around it um, and it went mad it put on lots of growth and from then on it's done very well I have added more chicken manure in subsequent years but not a whole bag like I did that first year down here is the guinea pig hutch now poor old guinea pig we did have guinea pigs in the past and they used to free range in the garden but my dog when he grew big enough discovered he could jump the fence and that was the end of my poor old guinea pigs so Cobber has since died and I was hoping that his his partner Bicky who's left behind would be a lot kinder on the guinea pigs but no she's way too interested and she actually made a lunge at it the other day so poor little guinea pig he's going to be sold hutch and all and I'll give up my dream of having guinea pigs free ranging in the garden which is a shame because I do like me a guinea pig I have lilliums scattered around in here I put them in here because the wallabies used to give them curry but I didn't have wallabies for three years while Cobble was here he kept them in check and I happily planted out some on the outside but since he's died um, we've been letting them in 
to help with the grass. And apart from a little nibble of two of them, they've largely left them alone. In fact, they've left alone a lot of things that were fair game in the early years whilst the plants were establishing, which is very gratifying. I've had to re-net some things, like the lemon trees. But otherwise, they've been leaving things alone. That blue tub has some compost in it as well. It's the last of my compost. These liliums are my giant pink ones. It started out as three plants and two years later it's been very successful here and now even the pups are flowering. Whilst I don't have much compost at the moment I do have the worm farm in that bath. I have orchids sitting on the top of it at the moment. I have to make a little spot for the orchids to summer in to get them out of the harsh light. There's another one down there that's going to need a bit more protection as summer progresses. And another rhubarb plant. As you can see this area is desperately in need of weeding. I have more liliums. This variety is called Royal Lace. It's usually my first lilium to come out and it's just delightful. This poor old brown baronia is getting overtaken by um, ferns and the gojis, the goji berries. Now the goji berries aren't that productive. They flower like mad every year and they've just started flowering again. But they are very sparse in their fruit production. I did mean to prune them back this year, but I didn't get around to it. It was the only thing that didn't get pruned this year. You can see, you can see a few flowers there. They're not flowering much, but they are flowering a bit. Their main flowering was in springtime. So I don't know why these aren't working out so well. And it's hard to find information about goji's, even on the good old internet. So it really is a bit of trial and error with these plants. This is my potting area. Pots underneath. Old bird over at the back, which I use for housing tools and stakes. This is spinach, which is now bolting, going to seed, so I'll let it do that. A few more broad beans in there, a few more carrots down the bottom. This here plants a volunteer. I suspect it's going to turn out to be a pumpkin, possibly a rock melon, but I am leaning more towards a pumpkin. Which is good because the pumpkins I planted haven't really done very well. It's not in a very good place, but anyway, we'll deal with it. More strawberries. These little cages are wonderful for keeping the blackbirds off. We don't get a lot of them here, fortunately, but they're a pest as far as helping themselves to things. I have lettuces coming on. The calendula gets a bit carried away, self so, so you have to keep that in check. And over here are butter beans. The butter beans are just coming into flower. And these roses do very well here. Always big blooms, beautiful scent. There are more broad beans underneath. With a smattering of alyssum under that. There's more calendula. I have planted some pea seeds here. The first of the pea seeds are coming out of the ground. I don't know how well they'll do though. I might have left my run a bit late with them. This is the other rose which hadn't done as well until I built up the bed around it. Now it's much happier. This is yellow raspberry, golden raspberry. I did have three plants but only one survived and this is that one plant it's just having the best time here and as you can see I've been letting the borage grow in amongst it as well. The first fruits are just starting to ripen. I did try one yesterday for the first time it could have been left another day I think 
I can see something's been having a go at that and my guess is it will be the eastern spinebills because I saw one in my red raspberries yesterday which are getting the same treatment. But that raspberry on the right, that will be ready and in about five seconds that will be in my mouth. And very nice it was too. More potatoes with the occasional carrot in there that got missed. It got missed because uh, we got a hole in the fence and the wallabies were breaking in and helping themselves to things and I was a bit slack and took about two weeks to fix up the hole and in the meantime they ate the tops of the last remaining carrots so they were a bit hard to find. In the background are uh, more potatoes interplanted with more broad beans which I have been eating straight from the garden. I like them raw but I do prefer them cooked. Nothing like a nice bowl of lightly cooked broad beans with a little bit of salt. Yum yum yum. I have another rose but I deadheaded it yesterday as you can see by the blossom on the ground. Underneath the deck is Pepino. It has had the best time spreading. There's also Herb Robert in there, which I do not recommend growing. It's very invasive and it smells dreadful. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't have any other purpose. Uh, the ferns are getting a bit carried away there as well. Anyway, back to the Pepino. It has borne fruit. That purple flower belongs to the Herb Robert, not the Pepinos. They've done very well under here. They're protected from the frost. But we haven't had the warmth here in Tasmania to really ripen the fruit. They will ripen, but when they're grown in the subtropics, the fruit is much nicer. Here, they're virtually flavourless. Rosemary plants. They were flowering madly, so you couldn't really do much with them, but the flowering has finished, as you can see. So they're good to go again. These are a white flowered variety. I have the standard purple flower variety growing in the chook run, the chicken yard. This here is Lovage, and each year it gets a bit bigger. There's its flowering top. I'd say it's 30% um, taller again this year already. I reckon it's uh, at least a metre and a half tall now. Good six feet. I wasn't going to plant any more rhubarb, but a friend gave me some crowns of a very old fashioned variety whose name I don't know. So I planted them out and then neglected them completely. But they didn't care. Up they came. More broad beans. This bed of the garden which runs along the fence line is very neglected. Um, I have asparagus fern here. But are there any spears coming up? Who can tell? I got some at the beginning of the season. I'm not even really getting the spears coming up to develop into the fronds. So I'd say no. This clover, I didn't plant clover at all, it just turned up, which is hardly surprising because of all the clay left in here from the building site. And uh, clover being nitrogen fixing is very restorative. I actually planted two types of grass. So the two varieties of grass that I planted were tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass, which does better in a dry summer which we haven't really had in the last few years thanks to reoccurring La Nina weather patterns. At first it was all grass then the clover turned up and was predominant for about two years and now the clover is receding and the other grasses or the grasses uh, re-emerging. I'm waiting on beetroot seeds to come up here hence the wire cage so they're all coming up soon I hope. 
I just took the cage off and actually you can see some are coming up now. You can tell it's beetroot by the little red stems. So that's good. The poor old tomato plants are a bit pathetic looking. I left the clearing of this bed quite late. It was absolutely chocolate with weeds. As I said, these um, chives were so covered by weeds they weren't even making green stuff for lack of light. So just in case they really don't get a kick along, even though I've given them a bit of compost, that's that black stuff down there, I've also put in some more seeds. I don't know whether it's too late in the season or not, but um, I can only try. Summer's been a bit delayed around here anyway, so hopefully it will, it will be protracted at the other end. It looks like the first of those tomato seeds are coming up now. Both varieties are gross lissy. Under these cages I also have basil and capsicum seeds planted. Again, I don't know if I've left it too late, but we will see. When I pull weeds out, if they don't go to the compost heap, I will leave them on these little cages for a few days to dry out and then I'll just throw them back on the bed again. As you can see from those brown bits there, then, I'll, then I will be confident that they won't regrow. The chickens are staring, hopefully, at the gate. But no luck today, chickens. They have to be under direct supervision when they're in here, and I don't want them in here at the moment. All my seedlings are protected by the, the wire cages, but they scratch the compost around all over the place, so I don't like that. The ducks I can leave in here unsupervised, so they're allowed in here every day. To do as they will. So that's my veggie garden in early summer. Not too bad.